The book of Revelation is really popular in our world, culture, and churches today. If you find yourself being a little overwhelmed trying to approach Revelation, then this video is for you. We're gonna explore three tips for how to read the book of Revelation. So you definitely wanna stick around to the end and see how we can make Revelation relevant for you today. This video and these three tips for how do you read Revelation will hopefully invite us into making Re Revelation relevant for us in the world today. Now, the first one is that we shouldn't read Revelation literally. Now that might come across as a little bit harsh. You see, the Bible we generally do read somewhat literally because it's true and it's real and it's relevant for us today. The thing is, John wrote Revelation using a style that really relies on these broad, huge, and intense, somewhat graphic images. He uses a lot of poetry. He uses a lot of symbolism to help convey a message and an idea. So it's helpful for us to remember that we are not trying to identify all of the details of Revelation. For example, I don't think we really believe that there's gonna be an actual dragon show up at the end of the world and these real beasts are gonna come out of the ocean and prowl around on the land. Instead, they help us see what opposes the triune God, what opposes a God that embodies the kingdom, especially in the cross of Jesus. And these images are big, strong, even grotesque, as they somewhat challenge those ideas and paint a picture of chaos and destruction. That's gonna lead us into our second idea, that the book of Revelation really is an invitation into discipleship. You know, it really isn't so much about trying to solve the who's who, trying to figure out what events are going to happen in the end of time and maybe in what order and who the power players are going to be. Instead, it's an invitation for us to embody the cross of our Christ, to invite the church into faithful response of discipleship. As our God paints a picture of a new heaven and a new earth, what we would call heaven coming in the end of all things. So as we explore the book of Revelation, as we lean in, we really do encounter a plan for the church. You know, those few letters to the churches in the beginning of our Revelation, they honestly are the foundation for how we would read and the lens through which we look at the rest of the chapters of the book. The way that we as the church are gonna faithfully live out the kingdom of God. Are we gonna do it through the cross of Christ, through surrender and fidelity to our God? Or are we gonna do it through the way of the empire? Are we gonna do it through the way of chaos, through destruction, seeking control and power, which ultimately we see don't take us to new creation? And that really then turns us around and uh, helps us see the third tip for reading Revelation. And this is a popular one, but the reality is trying to create timelines for Revelation might not be the most faithful way of reading Revelation. Now I understand that as you do read Revelation, there does seem to be a certain timeline unfolding. And we as a church like to figure out what's next, what's gonna happen after certain events. And sometimes we get caught up in that and we start trying to figure out when Israel becomes a nation. Again, who, who's who, who are the power players? What kingdoms are gonna stand in the end? Who's gonna rise and who's gonna fall? But if we again realize that the book of Revelation is inviting us to discipleship, if we then turn our attention to fidelity to God. How do we live out Revelation today in our lives in faithful expression to God? Instead of trying to put timelines on the chalkboard and figuring out when events are gonna happen, is it in my lifetime or the next? I hope these tips are helpful for you as you turn through the pages of Revelation.